Welcome back, all you weekend pirates. On this episode of Slack Tide Adventures, we're down on the southwest coast of Florida visiting Siesta Key Beach, and we'll be examining the top activities to do if you're visiting the area. Remember, if you're planning a trip to Siesta Key, check out my video on planning a budget vacation to the beach for your family. Now let's get started. Today, we're leaving our base of operations in the Golden Isles of Georgia, specifically the Jekyll Island Fishing Pier. We'll work our way southwest from Jacksonville through Lock Loose of Florida, until we pick up Interstate 75 just outside of Tampa. From there, we're headed south to Siesta Key Village just off the coast of Sarasota. At just over eight miles long, the island offers visitors a wealth of water-based activities. So if you're in the mood to get wet, Siesta Key could be a great option for your next vacation. Let's take a few minutes to look at some of the popular activities that the Key has to offer. If you're researching a trip to Southwest Florida, you're probably looking to get your toes in the sand at some point, and taking a trip to the beach is the number one activity that I'd recommend. Siesta Key Beach appears on the list of the world's best beaches each year, so it's no surprise that it's my top recommendation. As you can see in the video, Siesta Key has long stretches of soft white sand and gin clear water. Its gentle slope, modest surf, and depth make it a perfect place for small children to play safely. Sunset Beach at the northwest tip of the island is appropriately named and visitors can enjoy slightly less crowded beaches at Crescent and Turtle Beach. But be advised, Turtle Beach was undergoing beach reconstruction on our visit due to hurricane damage. Regardless of which beach you choose, the Siesta Key trolley can get you to an easy beach access. A trip to Siesta Key would not be complete without exploring the Siesta Key Village. The village is mainly located along Ocean Boulevard at the north end of the island and consists of casual restaurants and tropical themed bars that will allow you to quench your thirst that you developed while relaxing in the sun on the beach. If you're looking for something a little finer to eat, you'll find plenty of high-end restaurants in the area to satisfy your hunger. A stroll down Siesta Key Village's tree-lined promenade will reveal a variety of local boutiques and souvenir shops that will keep everyone occupied while you're away from the pool. My favorite aspect of our visit to the village at night was the live music choices. While you're in town, I recommend you check out the live shows at the Siesta Key Oyster Bar, Gilgans, or the Daiquiri Deck. If you're like me, when you get near the ocean, you make sure to carve out a little time to check out either a sunrise or sunset over the water. Sunset Beach on Siesta Key has a perfect westward facing view to take in the sunset over the Gulf of Mexico. Pack a cocktail, a beach chair, and sit back and enjoy nature's light display. Siesta Key is an island for God's sake, so unless you brought your own boat to cruise around the bay, drop a little coin on a charter cruise or two on your visit. The area has many operators that offer a variety of tours, including dolphin encounters and wildlife tours. Dolphin excursions are incredibly popular. After all, who doesn't get excited by watching our aquatic mammalian friends frolic in the water? If you are of age and like to partake of a frosty beverage or two, try one of the Sunset Booze Cruises that are offered nightly. Generally, these are two to two and a half hour cruises that will give you a guided tour of the Sarasota Bay. There'll be plenty to see, including the Sarasota skyline, dolphins and wildlife, and what was surprisingly interesting, a tour of waterfront homes owned by the rich and famous, including Urban Meyer and supposedly Tom Cruise. Eventually, you'll anchor on the north end of Siesta Key and watch the sunset on the western horizon. Our tickets for the Sunset Cruise ran $60 each and included beer, wine, hard seltzer, sodas, and water. Just be sure to tip the crew at the end of the cruise. For people who are looking to wet a hook while on their vacation in Siesta Key, might I suggest bringing your gear to Nora Roberts Park. I thought I had recorded some really good video of me catching some yellowtails under the pilings, but I had a camera malfunction, so all you're getting is some cell phone shots and video. Just know that the park has a ton of structure in the form of a seawall and bridge pilings. And on my visit, there were multiple fishermen enjoying themselves catching some small snapper and jacks. Renting a personal watercraft or jet ski as they are commonly known is probably the most fun you'll have on any vacation. Rental rates hover around $60 for a half hour and about $100 for a full hour, but vary from one operator to another. This will include gas and life jackets. And don't worry about having never driven one before. You're gonna fall off, just climb back on. There are plenty of companies that rent PWCs in the Siesta Key area. If you've frequented my channel for very long, I'm sure that you've noticed that I have loved to explore an area via my bicycle. Ocean Boulevard, the main artery of Siesta Key, has a designated bike lane running in both directions, so visitors can bike the entirety of the island, about nine miles in length. 
safely. Also, parking is a premium on the island, so having the ability to bike around is very convenient. Just make sure to follow the road rules and to lock your bike up if you stop off to shop or have a meal. While you're in Southwest Florida, try your hand at some paddle sports, such as kayaking or paddle boarding. Renting a kayak or paddle board for a solo excursion is surprisingly cheap, running about $30 for a two hour rental. Guided tours are more expensive, but worth it if you're hesitant to go out alone. You can walk up to the operators at Turtle Beach, rent a yak, and explore this Bay Area. Be sure to pack something to drink and apply sunblock before you hit the water. Also, if you're visiting Siesta Key from May through September, plan on getting out on the water early in the morning before the sun gets too hot. My last recommendation is to snorkel Point of Rocks. Point of Rocks is a limestone formation at the very southern tip of Crescent Beach. Visitors can enjoy snorkeling here and observing many native fish in their natural habitat. If you're planning on visiting Point of Rocks, remember that the tides can impact access to the area and that visibility is better in the mornings. I hope you enjoyed these recommendations of things to do in Siesta Key. If you did, please give the video a like and share it with your friends. And while you're doing that, subscribe to the channel. Slack Tides.